To fix environment compatibility issues, you can set up a Docker environment for development. To do that, create a Docker file and put all of your project environment dependencies there. Things like Node.js, Git, Python, so on. You can also use Docker Compose if you need more than one container. Now, create a Docker volume, map into your source code, and use your development container to run all your commands. If you're using VS Code, there's an extension that makes all that integrate much better. I'll leave a link for it in the description. Stick around if you want a deep dive. Yo, come see this. When I push this to the master branch, it will automatically validate, build a container, and deploy with zero downtime. Cool. Um, have you had time to look into that Windows issue? What? We don't even use Windows. Yeah, um, I use Windows in my home computer, and the project doesn't work there. So I have to run Ubuntu on a VM just to work from home. Weird. Nobody told you that when you joined the company? You have to buy a Mac. <laughs> we love Docker, but apparently we hate our coworkers. Think about it. It's frustratingly common to join a project and go through a full day of onboarding. But hey, we're getting paid, right? Unless it's open source. In that case, we just give up trying to contribute. Sure, it's good to have a guide to the code base, but it shouldn't take that long. It's just an introduction after all. You only really get familiar with the code base when you start working on it. And that's the frustrating part, working on it. It takes too long to set up the development environment. You need that specific node version and that specific Python version and an NGX server running and a MongoDB populated and so on. Switching machines becomes infeasible. Now, imagine joining a project and the only thing you need to have installed is Docker. Then you run a single command and that's already. That's what we're gonna do today. I'll show you how to set up the development environment for a project that uses Node, Heroku, and MongoDB. When it's done, we'll be running install, build, and start from inside a container. So our project requires Node, but it's not any Node. It's Node version 14.15.4 and NPM 7.5.4 and the latest Heroku CLI available. Okay, done. That would take at least 15 minutes to any new developers joining your team. And they would constantly run your project with the wrong node version. Now, let's build that container and run it interactively and with TTY. By the way, I don't really know what TTY stands for. I'm sure someone will leave a comment enlightening us. But if you don't use TTY, your container will run and die instantly unless the command from the image you're running keeps it alive. But images like Ubuntu don't stay alive by default, so you need TTY for those cases. Now we're inside the container shell, and we can verify that Node, NPM, and the Heroku CLI are correctly installed. If you queue your process, the container will die too. If that's not what you want, you can run the container detached and use Docker Isaac to connect to it. That way, it won't die when you queue your process. Our container has the tools that we need, but it doesn't have access to our source code yet. To fix this, we'll create a Docker volume when we run the container. We can now access our project files inside the container. But running the container and attaching to it is a pain. Also, if you try to use Git inside the container, you notice that you're not authenticated to your remote repository. The good news is that if you're using VS Code, as all the other cool kids are, you can avoid those issues and make the whole process almost seamless. Install the remote containers extension. That VS Code extension will automatically build, run, and attach the VS Code terminal to your development container shell. It will also handle your Git credentials, kill the container when you close VS Code, and do some other nice things to make your life easier. To configure the extension, we need to create a dev container JSON file inside the .dev container folder and also move our Docker file to that folder. The properties are very clear and the ones that are complex are better explained in their documentation, so I won't attempt to explain them. 
By the way, you can also declare an array of VS Code extensions that you want to have installed in the development environment. And you can also declare a command to run when the container is ready. Honestly, isn't that awesome? When you open the project, it will show a pop-up message asking if you want to open it inside the dev container. If that doesn't happen, open the VS Code command palette and search for Remote Containers, Open Folder in Container, then select the Project Root Folder. But what if you depend on other containers, for example, a MongoDB? In that case, you would need a Docker Compose file and a few changes to the dev container JSON. The volumes declaration will now happen in the Docker Compose file and we will need to change the dev container JSON to say which container is the dev container, since we're now instantiating multiple containers. I'm sure your projects will benefit from having a normalized development experience. I'll leave a link to the repository in the description below. As always, have a great day and I'll see you soon.